Join! Join! Run, 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 run. Don't fall. Hmm? This is Abandoned by his wife and daughters, Fred Dibner, the boat and steeplejack, passed the long and lonely evenings in his newly completed steam workshop. I'm managing all right. The cooking's a bit of a bit of a, a mess because you've got to stop whatever you're doing for going and cook your dinner, you see. And it takes a long time, like, you know, which uh, I'm used to, like, just racing in and getting at it. Um, I did my first trip to the... met this divorced fellow, like, young chap, you know, he'd only been married for two years and, he, and it happened to him. And he... he took me to the supermarket the other day, you know, shoving the bloody trolley around. I felt a right book, you know, never done out like that in my life. The thing is, it's very peaceful here, you know, and we've got rid of the bloody pop music. Um, uh, and, you know, you've time to think sort of thing. Before, all these young fellas coming round after the daughters, you know, the bloody parlour, they couldn't even sit in my own chair some days. There were that many of them in the place, you know. Uh, broke the bloody casters off the chaise lounge, like, you know, uh, six of them sat on it, you know, big lads, all six foot tall. Um, and all, well, all of them have gone now, so it'll give me a chance to lick the place into shape, sort of thing, you know. Um, I've sanded the floor in the new extension, so tonight's job will be putting the, the sealer on. Um, and all, and, you know, like I say, the... Now I can play me Joseph Strauss records or waltzes, you know, and all that like them. Now came a new development. The spectacle of a man swinging along alone, uncared for and unsupervised, proved too painful for some ladies to bear. Fred found himself under pursuit. Yeah, I won letter from a lady in London who said she would come up and look after me. And, uh, and one of her greatest wishes would be to look at my steam engine. One or two magic phone calls, you know. Some of them sounded unbelievable. Like, I just thought I'd give you a ring because I'm feeling a bit low at the present moment. <laughs> My answer to that was, I, I am an old lover. <laughs> I'm going to treat all of this with a great deal of uh, caution. I know I can fix you over, Fred. Somebody I know. One, you... one, one of your staff. Like, That's right, it? yeah. You know, are you interested, mm -hmm. eh? What's she like? Good looking I think lady. She'll like the world of old iron and. Uh, oh, I'm sure she Victoria. would, yeah. Mm. Oh, I, yeah. She's been on her own a long time now. Mm. No commitments. Mm. Hello. Mm. Mm. Come down, I'll fix you up. Yeah. Well, come round to where, where, where you've got it stacked away, like. Ah, come down yeah. to my shop. I'll fix yeah. you up. Mm. She works in the morning. Mm. Call for some fags. Mm. I've never done anything like this for a long time, you know. It's very. Nerve-wracking sort of thing, yeah. Um. <laughs> very, very nice, you yes. not fancy an old bugger like me, you know, right? <laughs> You'll have to find out, won't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's only one way, isn't there? Mm. Give it a whirl. Mm. How old is she like, what? Well, mm. well, Fred, she's never told me what her age is, you oh, know, but mm. uh, I think it'll suit you. You'll mm. have to see her. Not too young for an old boy like me, No, you? no, it'll be right. <laughs> she will be. Yeah, yeah. What, what's she interested in, like, anything? Well, she likes dancing. I think she goes all time dancing. Oh, I'm and not into she... that, mate. Yeah, well, dancing. Uh, she has to find some interest, yeah, hasn't oh, she? She has to go somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
Um, she's got her own, own, her own house, mm. not com no commitments. Mm. Well, I don't mm. think she's looking for somebody to get married to, but falls mm. in your court, mm. right? You know, like, I don't really know, like, in, in, in my present sort of situation, you know, I don't even know whether I want one round here or not, just at present, you know, it's a bit difficult. Um, um, you know, I think a bit of time going by will be better for me. Um, well, all, all I'm doing is introducing mm. for you somebody to mm. go out with and, mm. you know, perhaps well, wash your clothes, make breakfast for you mm. and get look, you know, look after you, eh? Yeah. That's, That's all I'm doing, it. friend. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I, it, it's a bit difficult, you know. I'm, I'm still a bit... I'm managing OK on me all night. Um, well, Colin, um, anyway, come and see mm, me. Never, you know, not just the no, lady, just I'll, come and see I'll me. I'll think then. about it, you know. Yeah. A bit, bit difficult for me, you know. Well, uh, I might see the lady mm, and mention. Mm, uh, we get on very well with her, you know, so... I will mention, all right, Fred. Yes. <laughs> You'll have to call I'll, in. I'll bear it in mind. I'll, I'll think about it. Preferably, if I were looking for a new wife or a new lady, she'd have to be interested in antiques and steam engines and beautiful things. Right, Fred? <laughs> as well as liking the world of Queen Victoria, she, she'd like have to be able to answer the telephone and be a bit diplomatic with People who ring me up and want me to do all sorts of unbelievable things that I don't want to do. Or, you know, have enough sense to suss the nutcases out from the, the genuine ones and get it all written down on a bit of paper. Somebody who can write. <laughs> oh, I like nice dresses, preferably the ones that fit. I suppose I'm a bit kinky, with like black nylons and high heel shoes and all of that sort of thing, which I think that black nylons and high heel shoes enhance a lady's legs, uh, make them look nice. Half the tattle I listen had, I picked it. The majority of her best frocks were blackened. You know. Fired by such visions, Fred pressed on with fitting out the matrimonial bedroom of the extension, which he'd built in happier times knowing that while there might be no shortage of candidates willing and eager to share it, few, if any, would be likely to meet the specification for the lady of his dreams. Women then, when, you know, maybe that painting were done about 1870, like they started at six o'clock in the morning, and like they, they all live within 200 yards of the bloody place, so they went home for the breakfast uh, and had half an hour at home, and then went back to work. You know, I mean, my mother did that. She worked in a bleach works, and you know, I don't think it did them any harm because she lasted till she were 80. They knew a bit about working. Them who worked in them places. You know, England sort of led the world then, and you know, everybody were nose to the grindstone, weren't they? All the tattle they had were androlic, weren't it? Everything, you know, the mandel job. I mean, now there's more time for looking beautiful than ever, isn't there? Because all the modern tattle, you know, washing machines, dishwashers, fancy cookers, microwaves, even record machines, you don't have to get off your bum for to make go, you know. But, I mean, there's none of this winding it up with the handle now, is there? Like they did. Mm. It's like this equal rights thing now, isn't there? You know, I mean... Never get any of them down pits or at the top of a factory chimney, do you? They're no way. Um, well, they want, um, you know, half of everything. Difficult. Mm. Fred was not to be tempted. He prudently decided to stay aloof from these concerns and to keep his mind on his work. A bit loose, Ronnie, this. <laughs> I don't think it'll fall off. It feels pretty solid up the middle, you know, whatever it's rocking about on. Look at that. Is it just the one joint that's loose? Hey, well, I can't hear you for the traffic. What? Is it just the one joint that's loose? Yeah. 
You'd never believe it, would you? It's no wonder they were worried about it. Oh, what do you reckon, then? Uh, we'll have to do something about that. Right? Another one over there, like that. <coughs> Lightning conductor fell off as well. You can see straight through it, though. Daylight. <laughs> see the train going by. The only remedy, really, is like a load of ironwork lap round it. It stops it from moving the what? Oh, aye, it'll, it'll all the together, track. like a cast iron and corner. How thick will they be? In? Well, the inch diameter iron rods and cast iron pieces on corners. So there's no way that them eight corners can spread out. Spread out. And then it, it'll be right then. Once we've and done it, like they did all the pack of dominoes together, you know. And how long do you think the bars will last when you, you know? Well, I'll put it this way, me and thee won't be around, you know. No. <laughs> Even if you don't paint them, they'll last that long. Mm. And how much uh, you think it'll cost now? Okay. Well, about, about two grand. <laughs> like, they, you know, it seems a lot, but there's a lot of engineering. And the other thing is, every side's a different bloody size. You know, with the, them who built it, they weren't so good with ruler, you see. And um, you think the job, you know, be right after we've had the... Oh, know. that bottom part, definitely, it's got it by the what's it's. There's no way it can move anywhere then. No. Uh, and the thing is, is to get a grip of it before it gets a grip of you. Uh, Two thousand yeah. pound. It's uh, mm. not some finding, first of all. Mm. Just but, uh, we'll put a project up for it yeah. before we yeah. We can, uh, see if they can raise the uh, have a <laughs> raffle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if every day were like today, it, it'd be beautiful, this job. It's not so pleasant when the wind's bloody howling and birds blowing off Padgett brush all over your specs. <laughs> you know, you think, well, did I start this job, you know? It's God forbid another 17 years of this, pay off the mortgage. <laughs> I was nearly ready for retiring, you know. Well, not retiring, I'll never retire, I'll die uh, doing something like but. You know, like, having life a lot easier than what it has been, you know, over the last 17 years. And now, you know, I've got another 17 years of it. <laughs> I'm getting old and it's a young man's job. There's not a lot we can do with that. What sort of a job is it, that? Did it like the job? What? Well, like the job. Yeah, oh, not really. Oh. What worries me is what's behind, you know. Yeah. How the masonry is. I mean, here, there's a, a great crack to shove my fingers in. <coughs> Working round churches is quite nice and peaceful, you know, and at least you're doing something that it has a fair chance of surviving, like, you know, they, they don't knock them all down. I think some of these Victorians who've made the money out of spinning mills were paving the way into heaven when they built some of these in the 1870s, you know, like they'd uh, have the skin off the backs of uh, all the lads, like, and, you know, we'll build a nice church. <laughs> these blokes who built this particular church must have had a hell of a battle because it's made out of local flag rock, which is terrible stuff to chop. It's hard as iron. It's not like it were when we first come up. You can't swing it about now. We're rocking about three inches before each way. Well, from here, it looks as if you've made a solid job. Oh, and it's all right now. Here. And all spires pointed and everything. Well, it'll really be here for no another more. couple hundred years, will it? It'll be there for a couple of hundred years. Oh, easy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no way it's going to fall down no more. Oh. Be there when we're all dead. <laughs> We arrived the other day to have a look at the bell, and like the sort of skyline in the cemetery had changed, you know. God, you know, it's about 24 gravestones been cocked over and smashed to pieces, you know. It's about 10,000 pounds worth of damage, you know. Um, what sort of people are these who can come around and shove over things like that that have been stood there for a hundred years and just smash them to pieces, you know? They're evidently more than children, you know, for a shove a stone over like that. You know, in the stages of early manhood. The thing is that they're either out of work 
I'm very unhappy and, and have a grudge against society as, you know, as we oh, did know it, you know, all nice and peaceful and proper. And, you know, they just want to disrupt everything that they can bloody lay their hands on that's disruptable, you know. Why, well, why, you know, have we gone like this now? Because things were really bad in the 1930s, you know, people were actually hungry. You know, none of these people are hungry and have no bloody shoes. And yet them, them fellas in 1930, they didn't do it, did they? Um, sort of it, it, you know, I don't know. The thing is, they lived in a world full of bloody fear. They knew if they did the wrong thing, it'd be trouble. And now they have no fear of anything, you know. I mean, we've, I think we've definitely gone too bloody soft. You know, without a doubt, I mean, poor little Johnny couldn't help it. You know, he's under a lot of stress and this and that other. I mean... Bloody Ayatollah, if you pinch a loaf of bread there, like, bang, you know, it's the whole finger off, you know, and I think if they did a bit of that here, like, the uh, things would be a bit straighter. I mean, Isle of Man, the vandalism there, when they had the butch, where I believe, you know, I'm on, this is only what I've read in papers, were practically non-existent, and now, you know, the wonderful bloody common market job, they've been stopped using it, you know, I can't do it no more, you know, because the common market says so. Um, you know, it is... They'll never get any better until they bloody fire them into line, you know, like National Service or something like that. But, I mean, there's all these arguments against it, but the people who argue against it never come up with a bloody solution, do they? Never. You know, it just goes steadily worse day by day. Um, so what can you do? You know, there's a lot to be said for the olden days, I say, you know, and how they did things. Um, you were better craftsmen, you know, better at everything, really. Um, have more respect for property and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, now they have no respect for nothing. You know, all they want is a life of bloody pleasure. Uh, difficult. Nothing was happening to cheer Fred up these days. And he had now taken on a felling job as dangerous as any he had ever tackled. This is a bit of an unusual subject, this tower, because I've only ever done one before and things didn't quite go right, you know, but I learned a lot. And uh, I think we'll have this one right, you know. We're going to undermine half of the tower, but all the staircase and everything, and prop it up on the sticks like we do with the chimney, and then set fire to it, you know. I mean, we've got everything calculated right. It's got to fall over. can say this is going to go exactly like, I mean, them fellas who send bloody rockets off to moon and space and all of that, look how many clangers they have. And that they're clever fellas, you know, I mean, it's some sort of feeling. Somehow or other, this tower, it'll be right, this one. It'll be a good one, you know. on them now, the bent. Yeah, a few hundred tons squeezing on them now. And all these stairs all the way up for seven floors. <laughs> Apart from this bit here. Some of that will have to come out. Come on, lad. Just took the screw stuck in. Give me a minute. Hey? Eh? No, here we go. Here, near as you can get them to it. It'll do, though. Get it, tip them up. Get them all When we're ready, I'll give you the word and we'll get them all out. Well, no, I think what'll happen, it'll go over and then it'll all disintegrate, you know. Hopefully, you know. I don't know, really. I've lost him, I didn't want to clang you, you know. It didn't work very well. It's all air lads here with the tyres now. The bomb site. 
there's two props around the corner which are very critical. You know, we've got to have a good fire there. Uh, on top of there, cock. Oh, and that'll be reached, I think. You know, I've only ever done one of these before and it went wrong, but I think I learned a lot of lessons with that one. We're a bit down on tyres, really. We could do with some for the inside and we haven't got any, you know. Uh, so it looks like a bit of a pot up job. <laughs> Everything could burn away and the things stay up. That's the worst. But somehow or other, with the weight that's on the props, I don't think that can, that's going to happen. You know, there's a lot of tons on on this just on the outside. You know, and what what there is of woodwork inside, will you know, won't keep the bugger up. I don't think. You know, it'll pull it off them sticks that are inside. Now then, if you want to enjoy this. All I want you to do is light the fire, you see. And so I'm very superstitious, you know, I don't like doing it myself. So I'll, I'll show you work lighting, and then as soon as we've got it going, you can toodle off over there to a safe place, you see. So we'll get rid of all the crowd and we're away. And then it's a uh, keep your fingers crossed and pray, you know. Look at this time, yeah. we're away. Right, come on, run this going. Don't fall down the... There you are. Stick it in, stick it in there. That's it, come on in, do it. No, that'll do. All right, come on. Come on, come on, that way. Come on, you're her cut. In here, love. Hey, oh, oh. In there. Yeah. Down there. Down there. No, you're all right, love. You can uh, move over there out here. So Have a good job now, Deb. <laughs> all the way across down there. It's that bloody central stairwell that's holding it up. You see a big crack there. Can you see that crack on the corner there, see? Look. You see that crack on it? There's, there's summit going now. Wait a minute, I think it's time we should retire. Oh, in the bloody 
anything, no. I did have my bed. Big crack in the wrong place. Boy, I'm gonna look round the other side. We'll make the, the gap a bit bigger. Uh, I know my pocket. Uh, <laughs> make the gap a bit bigger, because it... Did you see how they, how they went, them props? Shorter and shorter, you know, bent-like, and they were a bit worried, you know, I think next time, about two foot six instead of, you know, 18 inches or so. Uh, yeah, they always do, you know. Be a brave man who can tackle one of them with a box of matches and not feel any worry, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> They're in a bloody big heap now, isn't it? Right. Yeah, well, we're off to the pub now. You want one of them bricks? 